here we need to find an expression for the capacitor voltage as, as a function of time and then also make a plot of that. Uh, we're supposed to use S-domain analysis. So to get started we need to find the initial conditions on the capacitor voltage. So let's draw the circuit for T less than zero. That means this part can be replaced by a short circuit and the capacitor looks like an open circuit in the DC steady state. So uh, assumption back here is that this is a constant. Having done this, we need to find the voltage right there. Uh, looking at this circuit, it appears that we have the voltage across R2 being the same thing as what we're looking for. And this boils down to a two resistor voltage divider. So take the resistor of interest divided by the total series resistance connected to Vs. That's our initial condition on the capacitor voltage. So let me pull up the original circuit. So let's start by looking at the circuit for time greater than zero. That means this now looks like an open. So now we've disconnected the resistor R2 so we can remove that device. So next, let's convert this circuit directly into the S domain. We have some possible choices here for the capacitor. We could either use, we'll use the battery symbol for the DC. We could either use, that's a zero there, this form, or we could use the parallel current source form. Given by C times VC of zero. Since I'm looking for the voltage between these two nodes, uh, if I can avoid introducing extra nodes, that might be helpful. So I think I'm gonna pick this form and then we can do a nodal analysis. So let me go ahead and insert that right here. And the constant source in the S domain looks like that constant divided by S. And again the voltage we're looking for is this capacitor voltage so I'll call that VC of S. I think nodal analysis is most likely way to go. Let me assign my reference down here. That means we've got VC of S up top. Uh, voltage source right here constrains the other node voltage. So we have one equation, VC of S minus VS over S divided by R1. Plus VC of S divided by our impedance to ground, one over CS. Plus the current exiting associated with that source. So that gives us a negative CVC of zero and we found that result earlier, so that can be dropped in and set that result to zero. Let me collect my terms associated with the desired unknown. So here I'm just doing one over one over CS. And let me put the constant terms on the other side, or the terms not involved with the capacitor voltage. So that gives Vs over R1s, that was the term right here, and the other term, plus 
C times the initial capacitor voltage, which was Vs times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. I'm going to clear a little space here and uh, remove the circuit. So solving for my capacitor voltage, take this chunk and divide it by this chunk with a result looking like this equation. Now this is before any simplification has been done of course. So let's take a look at placing this equation in Maple so we can do the inverse Laplace transform to get our VC of T. And let me step through what I've done here. We need to specify that we want to do S domain type work, so we need this with statement. In the next part, I've entered the equation as we derive from nodal analysis, and we end up I can get my double clicker to work. We end up with this result. So uh, it's always a good idea to take your Maple results and try to put those in a little bit more pleasing format whenever possible. So I'll note that this term right here is sharing a common uh, coefficient as this term. And this looks like a constant that sits out in front. So let me grab the constant part first. And I'll collect the common coefficient. So we had a 1 and then minus. We have E minus to the T over R1 C. Got a lot of clutter going on, so let me clear out the rest of the board except for the solution we're working on. Of course, this is our solution that's valid for T greater than or equal to 0. So then our initial voltage that we found earlier was Vs times R2 over R1 plus R2 and that was our result in the DC steady state prior to T equals 0. So next we'll make a plot of this function DC of T in volts, and then time in seconds, right there. So we start out with, uh, I'll assume that Vs is a positive number for this graph. So we've got Vs scaled by this voltage divider fraction. That's our starting point. And to see where we end up, or let this Actually, let's do the case where t equals 0. If this is 0, then it means the whole chunk here goes to 1. So we've got 1 minus 1 equals 0. That wipes out this part. And so we're left with Vs times R2 over R1 plus R2. So that makes sense because the capacitor voltage is not supposed to change instantaneously. Erase that stuff. Now supposing we're trying to figure out where we end up, if T goes to much greater than that time constant underneath, R1C, or if, if you like, we could just say plug in T equals infinity, this whole piece goes to zero, leaving us with uh, that quantity plus this quantity, which, interestingly enough, works out to be write that over here, Vs times 
R2 plus R1 over R1 plus R2, and that's just 1. So we end up at Vs. It's a first order type of curve. So we have something that looks like that. So essentially, the uh, two resistors set the initial voltage back here, um, but then it doesn't matter what the resistors are. We always end up at VC in the final DC steady state. And so our time constant in this area, I'll just call that tau, is governed by R1 and C. Yeah, I think that pretty much wraps it up for this problem. We had the expression in equation form.